Hello and welcome back to another tasty tutorial. Today we'll be taking a look at how to create this little woolly type of little big planet inspired character. So hopefully by the end of this tutorial you'll have a nice little woolly character. Let's get into it. So I'm going to open up Blender 2.93. You can see all of the shortcuts in the bottom left corner and I'm just going to clear the whole scene like that. Let me return my cursor to world origin, so shift S world origin, and we'll start off with a ball, but we won't be using a sphere, we'll actually be using a cube. So I'm going to press S, hold control, and then drag it up to 2. So this is going to be the size. Control A to reset the scale, and I'm going to add a subdivision of 1 by pressing control 1. You can see in now modifiers that we have a subdivision of 1. After that, I'm going to add a cast modifier and change the factor to 1. And I'm going to apply the subdivision and the cast modifier. Now I can add a subdivision of, let's say, 2. Press W to shade smooth and we have ourselves a nice little ball. Why did we do this? It's because we'll be using these three vertices to create a mouth. If we were to have a UV sphere, we would have a bunch of these vertices and it would be much more complicated to create just a simple mouth. Everything done, press Ctrl B and then just drag your mouse. Let's say here it's about, let's say here is about right. Now select the bottom vertex and you can either move it by just pressing G, but it's not going to be very precise. You can just press G twice and move it like that. So we'll be moving it on the actual edge. In order to see a bit better, we're just going to divide the screen and on our second screen, I'm just going to press three on my numpad to go into the side view so I can see the shape of my ball. When I'm ready, I'm just going to shape it. So I'm going to move it a bit more forward like that. I'm going to move these bad boys a bit more inside and a bit more forward. So I'm trying to model the whole mouth. We have to move this other side too. Easiest way, I'm just going to go into wireframe. I'm going to press C, select just the left vertices without the ones in the middle. Press X and delete those vertices. And now I can go under my modifiers, add a mirror modifier and pull it before the subdivision. Also, don't forget to click the clipping. Let's see how our ball looks like. It's something like this. So I'm also tracking on my right side what's happening to the shape of my face. When I'm kind of happy with my shape, I can just select these two vertices, press E to extrude and just pull it in like that. So I'll go too deep, somewhere about there. We can also move it later and just rescale it, something like that. And we have a nice little mouth opening here. However, this is not very optimal right now. I want to actually add a bevel. So I'm going to add a bevel and I'm going to add it before the actual subdivision. And you can see that the edge of our, let's say, face or the edge of our mouth is a bit more defined. However, we have this problem up here. What I suggest you to do is to just change the angle until most of your spaces are nice and flush. Let's say like this. Kick the segments up to two. Now we don't want an extremely sharp edge. We want to have it kind of relaxed, something like that. And again, you can also move the vertices after you have done this so you can get a nice little wide mouth. In my experience, it's usually best to keep it very light and warm, some sort of smile like this should be completely fine. I'm going to return my cursor to the world origin and I'm going to create the tongue by just using a UV sphere. S, scale it on the Z and then R and rotate it on the X. And now I'm just moving it into position, but I'm trying to make sure that it's covering the back of the mouth. So the back of the mouth is not as apparent. Scale it on the X again. Just make sure that the tongue is just covering most of the mouth and that it makes sense in the context of the mouth. And when you're done, just press W to shade smooth and that's it. For the eyes, again, mega easy. I'm just going to add a cube and we'll do the same trick again. Only in this case, we're going to use a control to subdivide and then cast modifier to one W to shade smooth and just make them smaller. I'm holding control and dragging it to a scale of 0 0.1. 
Now, you might be thinking, how do we position these guys? Well, it's going to be fairly easy. First, I'm going to apply this mirror so we have everything as it should be. Then I'm going to select this vertex right at the corner of the mouth, and I'm going to press Control S cursor to select it. Then I'm going to choose my eye, Shift S, Selection to cursor. But you can see that it's on the edge of our mouth. So what I can do on my other screen, I can go to top down and just start moving it so it's a bit further back. Let me just apply this subdivision and this cast so we have this nice little sphere. And I'm going to add a mirror modifier. I'm keeping my cursor in the world origin and I'm just going to press Shift Control Alt C origin to 3D cursor. And that's going to mirror my object directly so I don't have to position it again. And that's basically it for our character. I'm just going to drag it up like that because that's where our little background is going to be. You can also turn it on the Y, position it a bit differently so he has like a sort of head tilt position, which is going to be mega beautiful later on. So next step is to create our shader. Now it's going to be extra easy. I'm going to change my right side to be the shader editor and just press N to collapse the menu and I'm going to add a new material. Now before we continue with this, please make sure that you have in your preferences. So if you go edit preferences, add-ons, search for node wrangler and make sure you have node wrangler checked because it's extremely useful and has a couple of really useful shortcuts that we'll be using in this tutorial. So I'm going to change in my render properties, I'm going to change from EV to cycles, feature set from supported to experimental and device to GPU compute. And then I'm going to go under my modifiers tab and I'm going to click on adaptive subdivision for my sphere. And I'm going to go under my material and choose settings and go to displacement and bump. So this is because we'll be using displacement maps as well. I'm just going to rename my material to wool. So it's going to be obvious. I'm going to put a material on my eyes, which is going to be named eyes material. I'm going to put a tongue material. And then I'm also going to add a material inside. Basically, I'll just go into face select. I'm going to go under my modifiers, click on viewport UVs. So I'm seeing what's happening a bit better. And I'm just going to select by holding shift alt and then clicking with my right mouse. I'm going to select this loop inside of the mouth. And I'm also going to select the inner side of the mouth like that. Back in my materials, I'm just going to add another material. And this one is going to be called mouth because it's going to be a different color. Click assign and that's going to be black for now. This is usually how I start with materials. So you can see the inside is black. Open up again your viewport and that's it. So let me add a plane. This is going to be our background. I'm going to choose the back vertices like so. Press E to extrude. I'm going to pull them up. Maybe I can choose both four and just push them up further back, something like that. Control A to reset the scale. And now I'm just choosing the two. I'm going to press Control B and bevel. Scroll, left click, and that's it. Exit, and I'm back here. Now, in order to set up our wool material, I'm going to click on the principal BSDF, Shift Control T, and then I'm going to open my resources, find the wool texture. I'm also going to append the wool texture in the description so you can go and download it for free. If you have relative path check, uncheck it and click on principled texture setup. In this case, it's going to set up three image textures. We actually need an additional one. So it's going to be image texture. We're going to add a node and we're going to search for the ambient occlusion. So I make sure that the, I have the ambient occlusion selected, open image, and that's it. I'm going to change the color space to be non color. And now, how do we connect this? So first of all, we connect the vector to the vector. So from this little dot, shift A and add a mix RGB, like so. So I'm going to connect the color of the ambient occlusion to the bottom socket. And then the color, I'm going to connect it to the base color. Make sure you choose multiply and the factorial is set to 0, 1. And now I can freely change the color and also have my ambient occlusion map kick in. However, we're still not done. 
Now there's a couple of things we want to do. First of all, I want to close this scale of displacement to zero. And I want to delete the normal map. And I want to add a bump. So I'm going to add a bump node. Control bump height normal. So I'm going to lower the strength to about 0 0.35, something like that. And now in this part, I'm just going to add a value node and connect it to the scale. This is actually a trick by, I think it was CG Matter, and it's insanely useful for this sort of stuff. We can either try and UV unwrap this or whatever, but I'm just going to connect it to the generated, and I'm just going to turn it, let's say, to 90 degrees on the rotation, and then maybe, again, 90 degrees for the Z. I'm also going to lower the value to 2, so we have nice chunky stripes. Copy this material. So I'm going to go here under my material specials, copy material, and then I'm going to choose the tongue. Just paste the material, and it pasted the same material, but now we can actually change the color without influencing the previous selection, which is kind of cool. I'm also going to rotate this bad boy a bit differently, so I have something like this. And I'm also now going to do the same thing with the mouth. So I'm also going to put a wool material into the mouth. So just paste the material, and that's it. So I'm just going to go under my color and just drop it to black. Maybe this one, we can make it just a bit weaker, because otherwise it's going to fight with the scene. For the eyes, Rule of thumb that I usually use is specular to 0 0.8, roughness from 0 0.2 to, let's say, 0 0.4, specular tint to 0 0.4, and then I'm just putting it almost, almost black. And in most cases, it just works. So when I'm ready to start lighting my subject, I'm just going to press, so I'm just going to press shift S cursor to world origin. I'm going to go in my front view by pressing numpad 1, and then just adding a camera. Press zero on your numpad to be inside your camera view. And now I'm just dragging it out like that and positioning it so I have a nice view of my character. I'm just going to change the dimensions. So the resolution is going to be 1080 by 1080. This is going to be fine. You can change it to RGB, leave the color depth at eight and compression to zero. Let's move our camera just a bit more inside so I can just press G, Z twice and then move it like so. Another thing we can change is the focal length, so we can just bring the focal length a bit more inside. Let's say 62.4 in my case. Last thing I wanna do is just add a new material, and this is gonna be the background. So this is gonna be the background material. Dropping the specular to 0 02, upping the roughness to 0 08, and I can decide on the color just a bit later. So now we're ready to light our character. Easiest way to do it, use an HDRI. In my case, I have this small selection of HDRIs. I'm just going to use one that I use almost all of the time, which is a Veranda 2K HDRI. Leave the strength to 1, and let's press Shift Z and see how this bad boy looks. Pretty good, I would have to say. So let me go into my output properties, and I'm just going to click on the render region so I see just what's happening in the render. However, it's not looking very woolly, and that's because we didn't apply the scale of the displacement. So for my material, let me just up the scale to about 0. Point, yeah, this seems good, 0. 0.12. And I can also change the mid-level. And best thing about this mid-level is if I drop it more towards 0, it's going to go a bit over the edge and it's going to create a nice little fuller lip type of look and then i just do the same for the other parts the black the red and i just take care that it's not just overblowing over some parts maybe i can do it like that so we have a nice concise construction and now you can change the background try different combinations of backgrounds maybe you can try like a paler type of background you can add some lights or you can also turn your HDRI around and see which part fits it best. But for now, this is going to be it. Hopefully you've learned something from this tutorial. As always, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. And you also get freebies. Basically, all of my source projects are for free, available for free. And for free download, you can use them however you like. 
If you've missed something in the tutorial, you can take a look and see for yourself. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.